Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Q&A session with Citizen Remote. I am joined by Marilia Marais. Um, tell me if I did that wrong. You can correct me. Um, but Marilia is our uh, Portuguese immigration team uh, with Citizen Remote. She's going to be a wealth of knowledge, and hopefully we'll be able to address some common questions that typically arise when you are considering relocation to Portugal. Uh, Marilia, welcome. Thank you, Tim. I did perfectly. That's my name, Marilia. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, I might have practiced a little bit beforehand. <laughs> um, Marilia, so obviously Portugal is quite known for you know digital nomad visas and beyond. Uh, it's one of the early entrants, I guess, to this space. I think the digital nomad visa, the D7, was you know in the 2010s. Uh, you probably know a bit better. But there are also many other pathways to visas and long-term residency, dual citizenship. So you know, I'd love to kind of address, you know, starting off with maybe the D7, and then kind of you know some other popular visa categories that people looking to relocate to Portugal can kind of consider. Sure. So yes, this definitely going to be my second option, not the nomad visa. And the other tricky one, the clients that look like nomads and cannot apply for nomad, apply for the D2 is a business visa kind of. So how can I use a visa for residency and how is the pathway for the residency permit? When I start the application, you may look for the D visas or national visas. So we have this name as residency visa. When you apply for the residency visa, no matter which type, so student residency visa or passive income that residency visa, or even the D2, which is a business visa, this will lead you to the residency permit, which is the card. So how step by step here? I start the application and get the requirements for each visa I'm applying for. Once I'm doing this, I get my visa decided, approve it as it should be. Once my visa is decided, is approved, that everything runs perfectly, I have a second stage, which is not really related to the visa process. The second stage, it is the residency permit. So I have a formal meeting here in Portugal. I have the AIMA appointment, which was used to be SAF. We may know for SAF. Now it's AIMA, Agents for Immigration and Borders here. And once they get all the requirements, once more seen, I had your updated situation. So let's say for the visa application, you're using a booking for a proof of address in Portugal. Now you have another rented appointment because you're living here. Mm -hmm. So if you started with one type of documents, now you have other this is the moment you receive the residency permit. So only after this appointment itself. So just so you know, if you're applying for a D visa, national visa, this is the one that will lead you for this appointment and it will lead you to the residency card. The residency card lasts two years usually and can be renewed for up two or three years depending on the situation. You may start with two years residency card, okay? And gonna be renewed the same way or this kind of the same requirements when you first started. Got my question to here, Tim? Yeah, yeah. So, and you kind of covered a lot there. So it's really good to kind of break that down. So you just to reiterate what you're saying. So there are two parts to the visa process. And it's, you know, you're saying the residence permit and everyone else is, who's probably just now kind of researching this understands it as a visa. So when you're applying for a D7 or any of these D type visas, as you referred them to, I think there's like a D8, a D4, a D2. Yes. <laughs> um, so there are many, you know, different ways. And those pretty much are just going to slot you into whatever category you're most eligible for, correct? So like passive income, right? Or, or a digital nomad. Maybe you can kind of elaborate nomad. on those types really quickly. Yeah, so first type of visas, I have D1, D1 is the work-related visas, so how it started, I got a job offer or even started to work in Portugal, so this is the one, job contract connection here and apply, and I moved to Portugal to live through my work that they hired me here. Okay. D2, really important visa for you guys, so let's say we have, when I'm intending to apply for a D2 application. I set a company in Portugal or I registered myself as a freelancer in Portugal and my reason to move to Portugal is through my own business entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So this is my story. I want to move there because I want to set my company. I want to do the same. I was doing my home country in Portugal right now. So I don't need Portuguese clients. I don't need everything in Portugal already, but I need the company set up. I need a good business plan and everything together to show, yes, I intend to move because my project is amazing. I've been doing this or I'm gonna innovate on this pathway and that's why I'm moving. So D2 is really a good op option for those contractors, for example, mm -hmm. they want to use the company or the remote work to really establish a place in Portugal or establish uh, a 
freelancer project in Portugal did choose an opportunity for you. Let's say you do not have the income requirements for nomad visa. You can set the strategy for setting a business in Portugal and getting the two. So yes, this is one thing for you to start looking. The other day, three, D four usually are student visas. So student, once I got accepted here in Portugal, so first the college mm -hmm. or university, I got accepted, then I can apply for the visa as a student is residency visa is normally it is. I have family visas, important news. Let's say I'm a nomad and my husband wants to move with me. He has to apply for a family visa, which can be, let's say I come from a country that has, that has no Schengen visa. So I have to apply for Schengen visa and then come to Portugal. I have two options. We are traveling together and we are applying for two different visas. I'm applying for Nomad. My husband's applying for a company me family member visa. Mm -hmm. It's a long name, but the visa for family come together in the same travel. So my visa is the most important one yep. because if my visa got accepted, my husband got accepted. Mm -hmm. And they usually are decided together. I can send them in the same package if I'm sending by mail. Let's say if I have an appointment, usually I can appoint put the two applications in the same day. So I have one the other. This is one type. Okay. Other situation, I'm already in Portugal. My husband's waiting for me in Brazil. I have the family reunion visa. So I got here interview. They connect the embassy in Brazil, for example, and then he fly with the family visa. I'm saying this because you have two options. And for family, this is important. Oh, do I want to travel together or not? So two visas at the same time. Oh, no, I want to travel alone, get everything started, set the business, the housing, everything, and then everyone travels with me. Okay. So, you know, we have this. And then Nomad, Nomad, guys, is the favorite one. I, I like Nomad visas even before I start applying for the Nomad visas. Nomad visas now, one thing that I'm seeing from my clients, and it's the common question they even put here, is savings and requirements. So, a requirement that, I, that can be failed on your application and not saying about money right now. I'm saying about common requirement that I'm seeing for real long time nomads. The proof of tax residency. What does this mean? I had some clients coming from different travel pathways. So I live a while in Switzerland. I have a company in the US. I moved to Thailand. So where were you declaring your taxes? If you do not have a place that you declared your taxes in the previous year when applying for the visa, I cannot apply for the nomad visa for you. Yeah. Portugal wants to know that no matter where your money comes from is declared. Even if you're getting stamp show, I don't, they don't care how much you're paying for taxes, but they need you to show that you're declaring taxes. Yeah, because so they just, just want to make sure that you're actually going to file when you obtain this visa. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. So it can be a different place in your home country. So it happens a lot. I have Belarus clients and they don't want to declare in Belarus for their own opinions. Okay. But they are living in Armenia. So they declare taxes in Armenia where they live and that's it. Or they are living in Armenia and declare in the US because the company from the US you're declaring. Yeah. So please, if you do not have any tax declaration this year yet, fill it right now. And then we can apply for any nomad visa because this is Number one. Yeah. And, failed. and that applies for a lot of visas is to make sure, you know, with the, the rise of these digital nomad visas, not maybe in Portugal, but just internationally, I'm kind of speaking outside of Portugal, is just to make sure people are aware you should file your taxes in the country in which you're getting residence when you're traveling around because countries are asking for this. And so it's quite an important document is to file your taxes. So it is, but there are some, some, some visas that this is not a requirement. So let's say I apply for a student visa, they don't care. Really, they don't want to know if they're declaring taxes or not. But for nomad visa, this is a requirement. Your visa is going to fail in this first step if you do not have yeah. this tax residency. So this is one thing that happened when I have long time nomads. Yeah. So for real nomads, you're not declaring anywhere. And, and the D7 and D8 are kind of that digital nomad visa, right? Is that or no? No, no, they are different. And this is how I stop by money. So when I talk about money and money visas, the nomad visa, guys, is a work visa. So this is something that nobody tells you. This is a work-related visa, not money-related visa. It's work-related. So what they're going to know about you is you're a worker. You work remotely by yourself as a freelancer, as a contractor to your company, or as an employee, but you are a worker. The passive income is the opposite. You're not a worker. You can't be a worker. So you have passive income for your knowledge, for proper intellectual. You That's have... 
that's the seven. You have savings and the savings get some dividends, but you cannot be related to your work. And why they say it's nomad visas? No, it's not. Because if you're not remote work, there is no nomad visa. Mm -hmm. In Portugal, they call it remote worker visa. Yeah. So it can be a nomad if a worker. So this is why for the, the D7 is a passive income and they were made for the pension years. So I have my pensions, I want to move to Portugal, that's why. When I'm talking about how to prove the income and the difference between the two of them. Nomad visa, since you are a worker working remotely, they want you to prove they will have four times the Portuguese minimum wage. So you are a rich remote worker, mm -hmm. that's the story. Passive income, you're a pensioner. So I just have to prove they will have at least the minimum wage. And since you're a pensioner, you have money as savings. So you can prove that you have savings or dividends, not work related. And that's why you have to show in your bank account and a Portuguese bank account that you have enough to support yourself for one year using just one Portuguese minimum wage per month. So they are different. Yeah. For example, they do not require you to show Portuguese bank account in a monomad visa, but they do in the passive income okay. because it is savings visa, is your long path not working related, and here you are a rich remote worker. So right? D7's retirement savings visa, lower yeah. income but needs money. D8 yeah. is the digital nomad, requires higher income and job. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. And then all of these, you were saying you are eligible for family reunification on these visas. Yeah. To bring your family all for all that. the D category visas, besides a student visa or including a student visa? Including the student visa, okay. yes. Perfect. So that's really good and really helpful. Um, and then another thing is maybe we can just quickly highlight, there are, you know, those two steps that we were talking about, that first step, and a lot of people have issues with that accommodation understanding like if I'm going to have to get accommodation, but then I moved to Portugal, how does that work? I know you kind of briefly touched that uh, and highlighted yeah. that. Maybe you can kind of just elaborate on that two-step process and the accommodation specifically. Yeah, the accommodation is the question number zero. So how should I start paying for rent in a place that I'm not living? Yeah. Okay. So when we are working with citizen remote clients and one of the tips that I give is like timeline of your visa application. Expect to receive a decision from the day you came for the appointment or sent by mail in some embassies at least three to four months. Nowadays, guys, being four months. Why? And it's not, it's not a good thing. We have a change for SEF to AMA and we have thousands of process stuff. And now even the embassies that will pay faster is lower because every residency visa they need to pass here in Portugal and Portugal needs to decide. And Portugal is not deciding anything. We have a major situation governmental here. So, okay, it's stuck four months. Mm -hmm. If my point today in April, I'm going to receive any decision for my visa in August. So in April, I need a proof of address. Your proof of address can start in August. Why? Because that's exactly when you're going to be moving to Portugal. Okay. So this is the number one tip. This is free for charge. That's for you guys. Just so you know, and now the difference for the clients and who are you working for. It depends on the embassy, which type of accommodation they accept. For example, in Brazil or countries that can speak Portuguese, any resident in Portugal can sign a letter, say you're going to stay in my apartment and they're good to go. Mm -hmm. And Russian, for example, I need a rental agreement that is registering the tax system here in Portugal and longer than one year. So each embassy can be more powerful even before sending to Portugal to the side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway, if you're looking for bookings, Airbnbs, flat deals, or whatever other platforms, look for longer time agreements. We're talking longer time because in the law, it says you are applying for a long time visa, which is one year. Usually would the residency visa would last one year, it changed, but in the law it's one year. So they're expecting you to have a place to live for at least one year. So that's why, okay, I have Airbnb 11 and a half months. Uh, flat yield 12 months because this fit the at least one year requirement and it depends each embassy we can teach you guys which one requires what because they have to see the documents and then send to Portugal and I know they can stop some applications if it's not the way they like it. Yeah. And then once you get there, depending on how you found this uh, uh, accommodation, you can switch if necessary and you just update that in yeah. the second part of the process, which is yes. obtaining, you get that 
temporary visa, then you obtain the resident permit, which is yes. what is that two years? You said it used to be one, well, now it's two, is that right? Yes, now it's two. Yes, now it's two years, up to three years. You can renew it to three years. Yeah. So yes, once you're here, let's say the same day your visa is decided, you can cancel this book booking. You, you're good to go. But I don't recommend you to change anything while your visa is under decision because you've got the documents there, everything's registered, so keep it until it's decided. Move here, get around, so realize, oh, I want to move in Cascais, I want to live in Braga, and then you'll find your place. Once you find your place, the really important moment for you to have the place that you got to stay is in your appointment because here they're going to post you the residency permit. So that important document is going to be sent to you by letter. So really, get a place that you can receive this letter and it had to be your own place yeah. because this is going to be the address registered to you for everything. Yeah. So yes, that's why you need the, the real place to live in the appointment. Yeah. You said it's one part, but it's not one part of the same process. Why I'm saying this? I can, for some cases, ignore the visa part and go to the residency permit part, okay? okay? So that's why they are connected, but they're not the same. If I, if I start with the D8 visa application, got decided, if I miss the application, my visa is valid. When it's over, it's over, I come back. And even if I have a short stay nomad visa, it's something, it's not a residency, so short stay nomad visa. I got my visa, my visa is gonna last almost one year, live here to one year and come back. So. What are the options when I just come into Portugal where I can start from Portugal? I start with the Chinese visa or other topics. The same I talk about family reunion. I have a Brazilian husband. I'm here in Portugal. He could fly through the Chinese visa and start the family reunion residency card already here. Students, same thing. Higher education student, you can fly here and start with a residency permit. Okay, this is something you can do. European family members, only here, for example. You can start here, application yep. here. Nomad visa, no. <laughs> Nomad visa, no, 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 There's a no. no, no. Good to know. No, okay. Okay, perfect. So you know. Okay, so so yeah, there's obviously a lot that you know goes into that. Um, I know typically I recommend for people who are interested in kind of that long term that Portugal is a great option because it does offer, you know, clear long term uh, permanent residency eventually. And then it does offer a path to dual citizenship. Is that correct? Or? Yes. All those residency visas provide you a pathway to citizenship. And that's why it matters so much to apply for the visa and not jump here for the residency permit. Yeah. That's the tricky part. Let's say I apply today in April, I receive my visa in August. I fly in August, starting from August this year, in 2029, I'm applying for my, for my citizenship in Portugal, no matter which visa I got, student, family visa, the nomad visa, passive income, all of them, perfect. Let's say I do not want to pick this option. I want to come to Portugal, my husband's here. When you have to set yourself an appointment at AIMA and then start a residency permit, you cannot control the date line. So he flied here in August, new appointments. So perhaps he may have an appointment in January. Mm. So all those months, no timeline for the residency, no timeline for the citizenship. Yeah. So you're missing days for no reason. Yeah. Even with the change for the citizenship that we just have, you want, in fact, those guys that fly here and are waiting for appointments. Yeah. Because we have some change in the citizenship legislation right now, but it won't affect those that are waiting for days. Yeah. So, and I had something similar yeah, like that. I went, it wasn't in Portugal. I went straight to Spain for a family reunification, all the same. I got in October, and then I don't think it got processed until like mid February. And so, like, that's when my date officially started. So, yeah, you're saying that yeah. it's better if you're outside because that date starts from the application as opposed to whenever they decide yes. to process it in the country. So that's good to know. But the, the day start counting on the visa stamp. Yeah. So if um, the visa stamp in August, that's day one. Yeah. So this is and how it's, you it's only you got, five years for, for only a five years. citizenship application, right? For, for only five day. years. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean. And five years same time for permanent residency and this is the other part of residency every time that you have your residency permit it only lasts two years or three how can you be here longer than this you can you're going to be keep renewing but when you get five years you have kind of a choice to make i want to be a permanent resident or i want to have the citizenship if i'm european i can just have the permanent residency and it's okay but if i'm not 
I would do both. So you apply for the permanent residency while you're applying for the citizenship, but it's also five years. So mm -hmm. call the day, a hundred, whatever, five years from now, this is how I apply for everyone. Okay, okay? perfect. Um, well, Marilla, this has been fantastic. I think we covered a lot of the visa specific questions, um, you know, timelines, what to expect. Um, you know, you touched on taxes as well. I, I know we didn't really touch on the NHR update. Um, maybe if you want to briefly touch on that, um, but otherwise, I think we've really covered it all pr pretty well so far. I think it was almost everything. So NHR, we had another extension. So what is NHR? What what's so about NHR? Super. Why everybody loves NHR? Okay, so NHR means no habitual resident, because Portugal has a thing which is a tax resident and the legal resident, which means AMA applications, visa is one thing. Where you're living here, if you're declaring your taxes, if you have income here, is other thing. Really, other departments, they don't talk to each other. Okay. It's different. Mm -hmm. So knowing that, let's say I have a visa. I just got my visa. It's not because you just got your visa. So you are a legal resident, aim of paperwork. You are already a tax resident. What does it mean to be no habitual resident here? No habitual tax resident, which means you're kind of a tax resident here and you kind of are not. So you also have other place that you are declaring taxes. And that's why they're going to push you to declare here because they offer you lower taxes. Most common example, I have to declare taxes in the U.S. because I'm a U.S. citizen and I have a company there, so I have my dividends. Should I declare in Portugal? Yes, because you're going to live here, so you can declare they're already declaring. Through the NHR, that income that you declare in the U.S. is going to be exempt from taxation. And let's say you have here in Portugal a uh, property. So you want to refurbish your apartment, you have a property, you're using this. Through the NHR, since you got your taxes here, you get lower taxes for this apartment as well. So this is a part of NHR. If you have no other place to declare your taxes, it won't differ because you won't going to be showing them the other part of the, the tax declaration. Should you apply? Yes. If you have the requirements, always apply. Always. If you still have time, because you won't get any prejudice. So yes, let's say you never use it. It lasts 10 years. Who knows? Yeah. The worst you could happen, you're not using it. But once you have the requirements, apply for it. We only have one year left the NHR. And they are saying this since 2029. <laughs> but they, we only have one year. What happens right now? The difference here is to prove that you are a tax resident and it can start even pre your, your visa application. Remember when I told you about my Russian clients? So in Russian embassy, the proof of address should be a rental agreement registered on the tax system to proof of address just to apply for the visa. So those clients were already registered with an address there. And they could prove, yes, I were a tax resident in Portugal, even before I getting my visa. Wow. So this is one of the examples how it can be tricky. Long story short, come to Portugal. <laughs> the easiest part for you to show that you are also a tax resident is through the proof of address that you have in Portugal, rent your agreement or not, and your visa application. Because, of course, once you have a residency card on your hands, it's easier for the finance system to realize, okay, you are now also a tax resident. So start your application because until the end of this year, if you are a legal or a tax resident, you can apply until March of the other year because that's the last limit they put. And I'm not sure if they're going to renew it, to be honest, because it's not making sense. They already give the other options, which is unclear, but they gave us other options beyond the NHR, but speed up. Yeah, but <laughs> as of as of okay. April twelfth, it's still good to go at least for a little yes. bit longer um, of twenty twenty four. Yes. So perfect. So I think at the end of this, what people might you know, this has been extremely informative. Um, obviously, it makes a lot of sense to me considering I'm in the space. So hopefully, it made a lot of sense to other people as well. Um, there's a lot to digest though. So this kind of just highlights the benefit of, you know, what we can do at Citizen Remote, your expertise yeah. and the complexities of each independent case. So 
um, you know, very simple way to kind of reach out to you if they want to, if anyone wants to speak further with you and have a direct consultation, you can go to Citizen Remote and just click yeah. on and, and book a consultation. Um, we have a visa wizard and everything that will kind of help you with the document submission um, and all of that. So there's plenty we can do. Uh, Marilia, this has been absolutely fantastic. I don't know if there's anything else yeah. you want to touch on at the end, but otherwise I appreciate the time. I don't think so. I think it's just get organized and don't try to do it everything by itself. It's stressful. Yeah, it's, it's stressful. Ridiculous. <laughs> and, so, and another thing so. that reminds me, so apply earlier. Like, you know, people always are like, oh, you know, I'm considering it's April right now. I'm thinking about July. It's like, well, you should have started in January. <laughs> like, um, yeah, yeah, really. You, really, you should at least. Yeah. yeah. You should, because if you want to move in this year, if you want to move in, into Christmas, you have to apply the next one month, you know, because you have four months for them to decide, then you have one and a half months for you to get organized in the booking application. Guys, yeah. really, I mean, it's it, moving. Yeah, and it really does take time for you to gather all your documents. Like background checks are a pain, getting things translated or, you know, apostilled and all of these other things yeah. that you might not expect. Do it earlier rather than later. So yes, please. Perfect. Yes, please do it earlier. I think it was everything that I need to say. Yep. Hope to see you guys soon here. All right. Thank you so much, Marilia. I appreciate your time, and I know everyone else does Thank too. Thank you, Tim. Ciao. Thank you.